Hello, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at creating this light trails effect in Motion 5. So let's get started. I've got a background which I've made using a clouds generator and a zoom blur and you've probably seen me do this in some of my other tutorials in particular the um, dust particles tutorial so check that out if you want to find out how that's done okay so we're going to make a new group um, and first of all we are going to make a null and I'm going to hit R to make a rectangle hold down the shift key and I'm going to make a small rectangle and I'm going to center it up it doesn't really matter what shape it is I just happen to like it to look like that um, and what we're going to do is we're going to add oscillate behaviors to each of the X Y and Z positions so I'm going to click here add behavior oscillate and for the X I'm going to have an amplitude of 600 and a speed of 30 come back to the properties transform oscillate this time for the Y and the Y amplitude is going to be 400 and the speed is going to be 25 and I think I'm going to change the phase to 2. Come back and do the Z oscillate and this time we're going to have 1250 for that amplitude and 40 for the speed. And finally we're going to add another behavior to that global position so this is going to be on top of those oscillate behaviors and that is going to be a wriggle I'm going to choose a wriggle amount of 50 pixels I'm going to set the apply mode to add and subtract the frequency to 1.5 and the noisiness to 0.3 so let's just play that back and see what that looks like so that null object is flying around driven by those oscillate behaviors and modified by the wriggle behavior okay we're going to call that null one and then we're going to turn on turn it off because we don't need to see it uh, we're going to come down here and we're going to make a new layer a new group i should say and we're going to hit the c key and we're going to draw a very very small circle and we're going to come to its geometry just to make sure it's as small as I want it to be I actually want to set that to minus 5 this to 5 this to 5 and this to minus 5 it's turned a bit sort of square but that really doesn't matter in this case because of what we're going to be doing with it we can actually if we want just slightly increase the roundness to 2 there you go and in order to create our trails we're going to select that circle and hit E to make an emitter and we're going to turn the emitter to 3D like so we're going to set the speed right down to 0 because I actually don't want it to be the particles to be thrown off in all directions I want them actually to stay in one place and that'll be obvious a little bit later on so I'm going to set the birth rate to 300 and the life to 1.25 I'm going to come down here and set the additive blend mode um, on and similarly with the emitter blend mode I'm going to set that to add and I'm going to center it up just to keep things nice and tidy come back to the emitter itself the color mode I'm going to set to color over life to well open this gradient I'm going to set this end to white and this, this opposite end I'm going to set to the color of my choosing which is like so and that's going to fade from white down to this slightly purpley color and I'm also going to click on that top bar which is the transparency bar uh, and I'm going to set this end one right down to zero uh, so that's going to fade out over the course of the particles life which is one and a quarter seconds 
Now let's see how that actually works in practice, because at the moment that's just stuck there, and that's not very interesting. What we're going to do is come to the head of this group, um, and the position, and we're going to add a parameter behavior, link, and we're going to link it to that null, just by dragging it into the well. Switch that group to 3D, uh, and so those particles are literally just following along in a straight line. You'll see that there's a bit of steppiness to that, and that's because I've deliberately set the uh, birth rate for the particles um, to be low enough so that we get some real-time playback for this purposes of tutorial, but you can crank it up, you know, all the way up till you get a nice, smooth, continuous-looking line. I'm going to turn that back down to 250 just to keep things smooth, but, but you, you, you understand how that works now. So the next step is to make it look a bit nicer. We're going to add a glow to that emitter. Um, come to the inspector, set the glow properties, radius down to eight, the opacity all the way up to three, threshold all the way down to zero, and the softness all the way up to one. And that just helps the look of the light trail. Um, next, we need a hotspot on the leading edge of this light trail. So in this same group, I'm going to make a new group. Sorry, drag it into that group. Uh, and I'm going to call it hotspot. And I'm going to duplicate that original circle that we made for the uh, emitter. And I'm going to drag it into that hotspot group. And I'm going to turn it on and I'm also going to center it up. Uh, and now I'm going to come to its style properties and I want to change the color to something like that. And I'm going to decrease the opacity down to 50 and the feather all the way up to 350. And I'm going to come to its blend mode properties and set that to add. And next I'm going to come to its scale and set that right down to 12. And I'm going to select the layer, command D, and I'm going to come to its properties, change its scale down to 8%, and its opacity down to 75, just to increase that center glow. And then I'm duplicate it one more time, come to the properties, Increase the scale of this final one to 350 and reduce its opacity down to 25 and set its blend mode to screen. Well, I want to add another effect to that hotspot layer. I'm going to come to Zoom Blur, add that to that hotspot group. And I'm going to set the amount to 32. Uh, and I'm also going to flatten that group like so. There we go. Uh, now I'm going to come to the top and I'm going to make a light, uh, which is going to make all that look a bit more plausible. So I've got my light. I'm going to set the intensity to 400. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to link its position, parameter behavior link. I'm going to link it to that original null. And I need it to sit in front of that hotspot. So what I'm going to do is just increase that Z offset. And there you see it's popped, popped into the front and everything is starting to look much better. I think this emitter is a little bit too, uh, trail rather, is a little bit too fat. So I'm going to come down and just adjust that scale down to about 75. Like so, I think I prefer the look of that. Obviously you can play with that. Uh, until you get something you really like the look of. Um, but what we actually want to do is create two of these. So let's uh, shoot ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to call this Trails 1, and I'm going to duplicate it. So it's going to be Trails 2. I'm going to duplicate the null, call it Null 2. And I'm going to duplicate the light, and call it Light 2. Uh, I'm going to take that light and I'm going to link it to null 2 instead of null 1, like so. 
I'm also going to take this Trails 2 layer and I'm going to link that to Null 2 as well. And in order to get them to offset, I'm going to come to my Null 2 and I'm going to just make one change to the phase of the Z position. And now if we scrub through, we can see that those are moving together, but in a slightly different way. Obviously there's no end of changes you could make to customize this to the way you want it. Uh, but that's the basic principle of it. Uh, obviously you can you can enormously enhance the look of these hotspots um, by using some of the lens flare techniques that I showed you in my uh, lens flare tutorial. Uh, for instance, it would be very nice to have um, a star and and um, a rays coming off it. Uh, you know, and obviously if you had lens reflection elements, it would, it would really be pretty, pretty much something. The only other thing I want to say before I go is that if you are rendering this out for uh, YouTube or anything with uh, a certain amount of compression in it, it's a very good idea to add a grain layer over the top of the whole composition in order that these nice subtle gradients don't uh, end up being horribly banded. Okay, thanks very much for watching. I hope that was interesting and I'll see you next time.